Hey folks, Crazy Climber 80 here again. And this time we're going to look at game number 17 in our 20 from 1992 series. And this is a beat em up by Konami based on a licensed uh, product, which means you know it's going to be probably pretty good. And this is of the comic book series Asterix. And this arcade game is also called Asterix. And uh, this comic series was created by, uh, who was it? Rene Goschini. Uh, he was the writer of it, and it was uh, illustrated by Albert Ud Uderzo way back in 1959, and I believe this is still in publication. <laughs> Pretty darn impressive. But, uh, this, yeah, this is a French comic, and uh, it is based in ancient Europe, where two uh, Gauls during the uh, Caesar Julius Caesar times uh, fight the uh, Romans, and it's the comic is done very. Uh, it's it's very uh, silly and very uh, very humorous, and uh, Konami of course does this super well as a beat 'em up, just like they did with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or um, Wild West. Cowboys of Moo Mesa or whatever it was called, they they turn uh, they turn uh, a bunch of licensed products, like I said, into uh, beat 'em ups. And they they almost always do a great great job, and this is no uh, this is no different here. But the uh, the comic series, which has of course uh, been passed to. Uh, younger generations of, of writers, uh, publishers, illustrators, etc. Um, over the years is it has two main protagonists and uh, that's Asterix the Gaul and his best friend Obelix, really really big guy. They are the uh, basis of, of the comics and then there's a bunch of other characters in the comics that make an appearance in this game. I have never seen this, but I, I really like this. This is this is pretty cool. The uh, feel of the characters is, in my mind, very reminiscent of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the way that they are able to move all over the screen. And uh, Asterix, especially, is very lithe and athletic, and he can jump all over the screen, much like in the, the Turtles games. And that dog there is uh, the dog of uh, Obelix. And yeah, player number one is Asterix, and player number two is Obelix. And you can play two players simultaneous play in this game. Now, one thing that I really like, apart from the the uh, agility of um, Asterix, is uh, the uh, the moves that you can make when you pick an enemy off the ground. <laughs> you can slap them around, you can slam them on the ground to your left and to your right, you can throw them, you can uh, punt them. <laughs> very, very funny game. I really enjoy this. Uh, there's a pile of apples there that can replenish your energy. One weird, thre one weird, <coughs> weird thing that might be difficult to remember is that your life bar uh, in most uh, arcade games of the time, it when it's full, it's yellow. It's the opposite here. When it's when it's full, it's red, and when it's empty, it's yellow. Um, if you don't hurry up, you will get you will get punished. Um, there will be a, a character. From the comic called Cacophonics, I think that's his name. He starts singing terribly, and uh, the musical notes will attack you. <laughs> I think we'll look at that a little bit later. And there's uh, Panacea, and <laughs> she'll you can get her to kiss you, and that'll uh, that'll restore a little bit of your energy. There will sometimes be a uh, rope or a vine that you can swing from, just jump underneath it. 
and that uh, wild boar there is the favorite uh, meat of Obelix. I greatly prefer Asterix. He's just so much more athletic than Obelix. Obelix is just a big fat kind of dumb guy. <laughs> but yeah, I greatly prefer Asterix. There is a charge move. You can hold down the punch button and you'll start to uh, swing your fist. And you just hold it down and, and then uh, release it. I would generally just do that with a, uh, with a boss character. The boss fights are are kind of hard sometimes. Uh, on occasion, the town uh, druid or, or wizard will uh, give you a uh, potion that can give you a bit of a buzz for a short time. And him and the potion are in the comics too. Uh, as in uh, a number of the Turtles games, trying to get, engage in a one-on-one uh, -on -one fist fight with the enemy can often lead to uh, disaster. <laughs> Note those uh, helmets on the ground. Uh, if you uh, use the potion to knock out enemies, or uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps if you've got a kiss from uh, Panacea, to stun the enemies for a second. Um, when you defeat them, they might drop uh, helmets, and you can collect the helmets for points. You don't score a whole lot in this game, so uh, get your points when you can, I suppose. But yeah, doing what I do, uh, doing the jump at an angle across the screen to take out enemies will get you We'll get you a little further, perhaps, than you might have thought. But yeah, when you come over a, a fallen enemy, various uh, uh, directions that you push with the joystick or, uh, or a combination with a button, uh, you can uh, you can pick them up and like swing them over your head, or slam them on the ground to your left and your right. And it also depends on uh, how big the enemy is. If it's just a little enemy, then uh, you might have a better chance of swinging them around or slamming them to your left or right. And bigger enemies you might just throw or kick. <laughs> that is a... Uh, that is a common refrain from... Uh, Asterix and Obelix in the uh, comics as well. Like those crazy Romans or something like that. <laughs> and this is the uh, first boss. And they uh, they have spears jutting out of them or a, a guy on top will throw a spear at you. Oh, uh, another move I forgot to mention. Um, you get, Well, you can do a charge by double tapping with the uh, joystick left or right and you'll run, and you can press the attack button while running to do a, a running attack. Uh, you can also do a... <laughs> you can also do a slide attack by pressing down and forward, and the, uh... Was it the, uh, attack button? But, um... That can also be very useful if you use it to in certain situations. And here is the first bonus stage. You use the uh, punch button to uh, force the horses ahead, and then the other button is the jump button. And the first stage is really quite easy. I, had, I still had a few seconds. And that uh, horse obstacle course, uh, I think, is repeated once, and there's another type of bonus stage that we'll see later on. And uh, stage one was in the Gaul village, and stage two is in Egypt. And the, the characters Asterix and Obelix in the game also uh, um, meet 
famous historical figures, like in this game. But yeah, my favorite attack is that diagonal uh, jump kick. I, you can use it quite a bit. Um, it won't always work. And there's the uh, sliding attack. That's pretty uh, easy to use, but it won't it won't always work either. The enemies can uh, can take quite a bit uh, uh, to uh, dispatch of. Um, I hate that tornado thing. It just moves about trying to catch you, and if it does, it costs you some energy. Yeah, whipping a, an enemy over your head will hurt any enemies that are close by. Ah, crap. Got me. And I lost life. You get, I think, three continues. And once those are uh, exhausted, your game will end. And that might be combined continues between you and Obelix if you choose to play as uh, the other player. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I love the, uh, the slapping uh, motion. There'll... There's uh, Panacea again. She does this little hum when she appears. And again, when you walk up to her and touch her, she'll kiss you, and that can stun... that can stun the enemies for just a second. They'll be uh, embarrassed, and uh, it'll give you a little bit of energy back. You don't get chances to get a whole lot of energy back at once. Just get a little teeny bit from, like, food or from kissing Panacea. And uh, she's also named, um... She's also got another name. Forget, uh... Falbala or something. But the, uh, the village druid that we saw earlier that gives you the potion... Uh, if you're playing as Obelix, he'll give you, uh, meat. And that will have the same effect on Obelix. He'll, uh, he'll run around and knock out the, the enemies. But that, uh, that, that druid or wizard is named Get a Fix. <laughs> like you're, you're getting your fix. <laughs> There's very, very funny, uh, punny names for many of the characters in the uh, comic series. The uh, little tune that Panacea hums when she walks onto the scene is kind of sounds like a, a part of uh, uh, Tuesday Afternoon by the Moody Blues. <laughs> yeah, those uh, Roman soldiers, those big fat guys, take a lot of punishment. We're not going to do a full playthrough. I just wanted you to see uh, what, this, uh, what the stages look like. In typical Konami fashion, when you do a uh, a full game playthrough, you'll start everything over. And it looked like I should have gotten flattened there, but I didn't. Um, but uh, when you play, you have to jump over this this hole here. <laughs> do not fall in. Do not think that you can just fall right in. Um, the second time you play through. Once that's over, then you get a game over. And that was very typical with Konami games at the time. Yeah, just keep doing that over and over again much of the time. Because uh, if you engage an enemy directly, they will often have a weapon. And they will use it on you. You might, you might be able to have a lot of success with the slide as well. And again, that's like down forward and the attack button, I think. And there, I took too long in one place, and there was the, uh, the bard Cacophonics.
who is a terrible singer, and uh, his notes attack me <laughs> if I take too long. But uh, I elected not to continue this time. And now I get to put in my initials because I placed fourth. Well, that is Asterix. And we will see uh, at least snippets of the rest of the stages. Yeah, I never saw this in arcades. Um, at that time of 1992, I I might have seen... Uh, um, I might have seen, like, a comic book of, uh, of, uh, Asterix. There are several different story arcs and, uh, paths that they took the uh, comic series. Uh, Rene uh, Goskini died in, sometime in the 70s. And yeah, the first uh, comic book or comic of uh, Asterix was in 1959. And yeah, over the years it's been passed down to other writers and illustrators and publishers and whatnot. Yeah, there's uh, there's uh, Obelix's uh, charge attack. We're playing as Obelix now, and yeah, he he's good for uh, jumping and bouncing his fat body on enemies. And uh, if there's a group of them clustered together, you can nail them all at once. <laughs> He's a big, big, powerful, fat guy. But yeah, we're just going to show snippets of the rest of the stages. Yeah, those... Getting the food really doesn't... Doesn't restore a lot of energy. And yeah, those guys throwing uh, boxes at you from below, or crates, are really annoying. <laughs> Peels himself off the ground like paper. <laughs> Watch out for these, uh, there'll be, uh, holes in the ground that, that, uh, that are barely covered up. You can fall right in. Um, yeah, a little bit later I put on uh, invincibility. Yeah, see, there's the uh, meat with, I don't know, steroids in it or something. <laughs> but yeah, that dog is named um, Dogmatix, and that is Obelisk's dog. Play as uh, Asterix again. Yeah, Asterix is much better. Again, in this game, don't uh, don't generally uh, take on the enemy directly. They'll uh, they'll likely have a weapon and uh, nail you with it. As you can see, uh, once the enemy takes enough damage, then they'll run off. <laughs> And here's another boss. <laughs> and this boss has a... This pharaoh has a... A cloud... That'll hit you with lightning. And the more damage that the... Uh, pharaoh takes... Um, the faster he gets with casting the lightning. And it gets very, very, very difficult to avoid. I think this was my last life here. Once the uh, boss has taken enough damage, you can uh, use a throw it technique, picking him up off the floor. You can control uh, how quickly you do the dive kick. I mean, uh, you can you can do a, a a jump and then quickly press the uh, uh, attack button to do a quick dive, or you can just dive from the top of your uh, uh, jump height. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue here, and I think I put on invincibility or infinite life.
but um, the next stage is the uh, British Seas, ancient uh, British Seas. Yeah, there's been uh, not just comics, but there's also been like a uh, cartoon uh, uh, cartoon releases in the uh, Asterix universe. There's probably been animated movies. Uh, I think there's been like a live action movie or something. There might be uh, more uh, plans for the series. To start this stage, you gotta watch out that you don't fall in the water for too long because you'll be accosted by sh uh, sharks. And they'll keep coming. You can't, like, destroy them all or anything. If you charge that uh, charge attack for too long, then um, you'll uh, you'll make uh, Asterix or Obelix here uh, tired, and they'll have to stop for a, a couple seconds to catch their breath. There'll be like a... <laughs> I love that move. There'll be like a couple moments, and there's another uh, rope to swing from. There'll be a couple moments where you might fall into a hole. And here's another uh, boss, and this is actually two guys. The guy with the whip is more annoying. He can uh, attack you from far away. Yeah, I put on, uh, I put on invincibility, I think. Uh, Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, if you want to use Obelix, uh, good luck. I mean, <laughs> Asterix is so much, so much more athletic and so much easier to use. If you, if you recall seeing this in arcades, uh, leave a comment, let me know which one. I, I definitely never saw this. But any, any game, any uh, media franchise that, the, that uh, um, Konami wanted to turn into a beat-em-up, they did a bang-up job. And uh, on this bonus stage, you just have to uh, collect all the treasures. And you have to destroy the barrels first. You don't have to press the uh, attack button to pick up the treasures. You just walk over them. That's good to know because uh, you want to save time. This uh, bonus stage is easy. That was a, a pirate crew that had that ship. And the pirate crew uh, figures into the comic series as well. Various uh, characters that pop up in the in the uh, series or uh, the comic book series, and now we have to uh, rescue uh, Panacea who got captured. Um, get a fix the village druid, uh, Panacea, the beautiful woman of the village, Dogmatics Obelix's dog, Vital Statistics the village chief. Um, Impedimentia is his wife. <laughs> Cacophonics is the bard. Geriatrics is the oldest villager. Uh, Fully Automatics is the uh, blacksmith. Unhygienics is the uh, fish salesman. <laughs> and his wife's name is Bacteria. <laughs> Uh, Julius Caesar appears a number of times in the comics. There's a pirate crew. Uh, Cleopatra and Brutus also appear. Very silly, uh, very, very amusing uh, comic series. I think I might have seen a little bit of, the, of one of the cartoon series. Uh, I don't remember for sure. If I have, it's been a long, long time. Here you have to go up these uh, cliffs and you hear a Panacea call out, Help me! 
I <laughs> just love the slap move. Eventually, you will uh, have to fight some uh, animals like a tiger. There's the uh, wind up attack. It's kind of hard to time it right sometimes, but it can uh, really help you out in a boss fight. And you see their uh, their uh, um, life bar at the bottom. And again, you can do a, a charge attack by tapping left or right twice. And uh, during the charge attack, you can press the attack button to do a charge attack. I like how there's a thought bubble that appears over the boss that says, About to die. And here we have a... Uh, a uh, uh, minecart type of ride, but there may be a, a dead end, or uh, or the uh, cart might flip at certain points, and you might have had to uh, jump out to a different cart. And at the end. There's Panacea, and she gives you a smoochie. I think uh, Obelix especially is in love with her, but I don't think she ever uh, reciprocates. And uh, this is the son of a Spanish villager. Um, I think he also appears in the comics, and you have to uh, rescue him in this stage, I believe. Or no, you have to take, take him uh, back to Spain. And strangely enough, you start out this stage uh, with, uh, with a giant stone slab. And it has a name. What is it? It uh, starts with an M or something? It's, a, it's this stone slab that uh, Obelisk carries right at the beginning of that stage, and it's called Men Here. And it's just for that part. Although, if you play two-player simultaneous play, you might be able to start with that slab. Just a uh, Obelix, though. And you can uh, use the, uh, the punch button to smash it over your enemies' heads. And you can toss it with the, uh, with the jump or with the A button when you're far away from an enemy. And then I don't think you can get it back. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a refrain from uh, uh, Tuesday Afternoon by the Moody Blues. I don't, I don't know a whole lot of the lyrics. I like the Moody Blues quite a bit. I'm a pretty big fan of theirs. I have a Best Of CD. Sung uh, a number of their songs for karaoke. And uh, right here you have to uh, destroy multiple stories of this uh, building here. And each story has a bunch of uh, soldiers pouring out of it. So once you destroy it, back off or they'll charge right into you with their weapons. the last part of the building. When you, uh, there will eventually be a uh, Roman Colosseum uh, stage where you have to participate in gladiator fights. You will have to fight like a tiger and uh, a bull. And when the animal gets like weakened, you can actually pick him up and slap him. <laughs> it's hilarious. This bull can be very tough. Uh, he can kick you. He can uh, charge you with his horns. Trying to do the... Uh, the uh, uh, charge punch on him may not even really stun him. 
and trying to do the uh, uh, diagonal jump onto him doesn't always seem to work as well as uh, it had previously on other enemies. <laughs> There's uh, Oblake's getting tired. <laughs> Just something about the way that he <laughs> does the uh, uh, pick up and, and attack moves on the animals cracks me up. And that there is the uh, some son of the uh, Spanish villager that you return to uh, Spain. And here's another uh, uh, chariot uh, bonus stage. Yeah, if you run out of time on this stage, then uh, uh, the stage will end and you'll, you won't get bonus points. This stage is a pain in the butt. Um, this is where uh, you have to rescue like an Indian princess or something and you can fly on a, a magic carpet you can fall off of that carpet and if you do you will lose a life and there will be enemies and, and lightning bolts that will try to uh, knock you off the carpet or, or just fry you Oops, see, I, I died. <laughs> that that you who sounds very suspect. <laughs> and now these enemies will jump on the carpet and try to knock you off. Or you can jump off of it on accident doing this uh, angled jump. Yeah, we'll just scoot forward to me. Uh, Surviving the carpet ride. These guys have nice long, uh, what are these halberds? So if you try to try to slide into them or something, or or fight them directly, they'll uh, they'll likely uh, stab you. And there's get a fix again with with dogmatics supplying the uh, potion. Yeah, you can't really control how he's dashing about, but uh, he'll eventually hit the enemies and uh, send them running off the screen, I believe. But yeah, the enemies with the long long weapons, it's best to do that angular jump on them. And here's these guys with axes. A sun chop! <laughs> Old uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> yeah, these these guys are kind of a pain. They drop these snakes on you. And the snakes try to follow you around. Just try to jump and dive kick that the guys on the carpet when they fly low. Eventually, they'll cast uh, lightning bolts on you. I don't think I've ever been bit by a snake, fortunately. Snakes used to creep the hell out of me. <laughs> like like a lot of people. Yeah, they don't really bother me anymore. I, I hardly ever see them. And, uh... We had to uh, rescue a, an Indian princess or something. And uh, here's another uh, ship bonus. And again, remember, you don't have to uh, touch the treasures. Or uh, you don't have to pick up the treasures. You, you'll automatically pick them up when you walk over them. And these, these guys, or these crates that don't have treasures have these, these green guys that hold up zero signs. And look like the crow's nest drop down or something. I'm not sure what that uh, indicates. But, 
At any rate, we're going to go to the last stage, and this is the uh, uh, Caesar's ordeal. He has you participate in multiple uh, gladiatorial fights. Let's go! Pizza, pizza. <laughs> I liked uh, Little Caesars quite a bit way back in the day, and now they're just now they just put their pizzas under uh, heat lamps. It's just <laughs> not the same as it used to be. Nice, nice and fresh. I thought they were very good, and they had terrific deals. Uh, my my family ate from them a lot. And uh, before we get to the gladiatorial fights, we pass by this uh, this palace here where where a guy is knocking uh, busts or uh, uh, heads of Caesar statues down onto you. But we are almost to the uh, Colosseum where we do the gladiatorial fights. Here's the first one against a tiger. And the tiger is generally very, very, very easy. Just don't stay in front of him too long or he'll uh, charge you. On occasion, he might try to slash you. Using the uh, charge attack is probably a really, uh, really good strategy against, <laughs> against the uh, uh, tiger. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it'll knock him over uh, doing the slide seems to work well against him too. Sometimes the uh, charge attack um, works really well against an enemy and sometimes uh, it doesn't even flinch when you hit him with it. I really crack up when uh, when you hit the uh, when you hit the tiger, especially with the <laughs> with the slap. It just looks very funny to me. <laughs> you are next. <laughs> Try Poor kitty. And punch me. I would have thought that there would have been uh, like nine tigers jumping off the screen for like nine lives, but I guess not, just two. And this guy is just a big burly uh, gladiator type without a sword or shield. guys again this this uh, the first boss I'm not sure what uh, what uh, strategy to give about beating this guy you can jump on top of him but again there's that soldier that will pop out and uh, try to stab you and break something up to all the smaller soldiers these guys I really hate I think this is the final boss the guy with the mace is super annoying. Once he once he swings his mace, ah, you're gonna take some serious damage. So you have to really like maybe bait him into swinging his mace and then uh, sneak in and get close. And you might be able to fire off a whole bunch of uh, hits. And the other guys just got a sword and shield. Yeah, once an enemy starts running off the screen, you can't you can't cause them additional damage or try to uh, kill them or anything. They'll just they'll successfully get off the screen. You won't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah, you 
gotta find a way to get in close to fake him out with swinging the uh, the mace. Trying to get the tiredness out of my body before I head off to work. Hope you all have a, a great weekend coming up. Work is a lot more tolerable for me now than it than it had been like months ago. We got rid of a really awful supervisor who was a stupid piece of shit. Or he got moved to a different shift, so I don't have to deal with him anymore. He just I pissed off too many to people. Your village anymore. Let's party! <laughs> party, party! He's <laughs> quite the idiot, uh, Obelix. And so they have a, a celebratory feast. You see the enemy uh, tied up <laughs> at the bottom. And then you start all the stages all over again. And if you beat those stages through, then uh, there's a proper game over. We'll look at a very brief bit of uh, player one and player two uh, simultaneous play. And I guess you can uh, uh, charge into your uh, partner and bump them into the enemies to cause them additional damage, or you can jump towards their head and then bounce off of them to uh, rebound and hit the enemies. Yeah, and in two-player simultaneous play to start with, uh, you can use the stone slab that Obelix carries around uh, men here. Play that uh, two player simultaneous play for a little bit. Oops, I lost it. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah, I think it I think it breaks eventually from bashing over enemies' heads or slinging it at the enemy. They <laughs> have kind of goofy poses when you when you uh, just stand still for a while. You can uh, hurt each other. In that two-player simultaneous play, so watch out. And there's the notes from Cacophonics' terrible singing that'll attack you if you sit around too long. I think later in the game, when the game gets harder, uh, the, uh, Cacophonics' appearance might not be as quick. But um, that is Asterix. Created by Konami in 1992, based on the uh, the famous comic series. Well, this is Crazy Clum Race, and thanks for watching. And I hope you join me soon for game number 16 in our 20 from 92 series. Take it easy, everybody. Bye bye. Cause I know I just can't stay.